All right, let's pull back the curtain. Let's sit down with two former NFL offensive linemen, Jeremiah Searles, Alex Boone, 16 years of experience in the trenches, here to break down one of the elite pass rushers in the National Football League. As of right now, Josh Allen, Jaguars Josh Allen, Jaguars. Has, not, has not been franchised. It's possible he might get franchised, but uh, he's going to make a lot of money off of the, depending on which website you look at, 17 and a half or 19 sacks this dude had this season, boys. Insane. Not, and I, not to it's mention cra- 90 pressures. Which was 90. crazy. 90. 90. Dude, and they haven't even started talking about stuff yet. Like, that to me is insane. A guy like this, you want to lock him up. You need this pressure coming off the edge. You need to affect quarterbacks. And there aren't a lot of guys in the NFL right now that can do it by themselves. And this is one of them. Like, when you watch his plays, his ability to continue relentlessly after the quarterback and dip shoulders in his speed. Like, we talked about it. There are times when you look outside and you see that speed and it'll just start to fucking panic you. And you know he's a good technician. He can turn his shoulders. He can dip. He can swat. He's got good hands. Like You're like, fuck, this is going to be a day today. When you have a guy like that, you need to pay him. Because instantly everybody on the old line is like, where is 41? Where the fuck did he go and who's got to block him now? Like I've, You see him outside. You see him inside. And that's the newest trend, moving two defensive ends on the same side because now all of a sudden it's like playing against two tackles. But one of them's not a tackle. So it starts creating this space. And the way that defenses can do this and blitz away from him so that all of a sudden you have to slide away. Like There's so many things going on right now that when you look at this film, you're like, dude, Pay this motherfucker it's, now, it's, right. especially especially when you have your first overall pick Walker on the other side who's starting yes. to figure it out, right on a rookie deal, right. So you can have your big money pass rusher, your first round pass rusher on the other side, and start creating, squeeze it in from the edges, right. Squeeze it on in from the edges, and I think a lot of what they're trying to decide with Josh Allen is, do we try and go after Daniel Hunter or not? Yeah, I was going to say, can you fit a third guy in there? I mean, Daniil's been rumored even before the trade deadline. There was Jaguar steam with Daniil. I, I, that's a lot of money. The problem is that's a lot of money on that on that edge. Is when you if you can get if you can get Josh Allen back on the front franchise tag, you probably don't make another big play for another edge another edge guy, right? Like you you really you've invested a lot of capital already into that position, so you probably want to invest more on an interior. Right. right, finding that next interior guy, that Grady Jarrett, that Aaron Donald, that Chris Jones, like those type of players. If Matt you Abuque. have these dudes, um, yeah, Matabuke, someone in yep. that realm that can pressure up the middle. Because if you have really good confidence in your two guys squeezing off the edge, you just need someone in the middle there to clean it up. Yeah. Well, let's uh, let's keep an eye on forty-one here as we mm. run the film. There's going to be just some snippets from. I got like nine or ten plays for you guys, and we'll focus on forty-one. But if there's other things you guys see that are yeah reasons for why these plays kind of blow up, you and let mind the you, the, the franchise tag this year, if they were to put it on him, is twenty-two point seven million dollars. Yeah. So and he's going to be looking for something money. something more than a franchise at some point, right? Whoop, there it hello, is. There's a turn that shoulder, dude. Turn that corner, my god, and. By the way, he, thing, I heard that they might also franchise him as a linebacker, which would be so messed up. But you know he'd probably try and fight that. Uh, oh, for sure. I mean, First, can you? But like, can you really do that legally no, when no. every play he's, a, he's handed he's right the there. dirt like this? <laughs> no, you yeah. can't. <laughs> That's not how that works. No. Right. First thing you always look at from a DN is his get off. Right. So po- go back and pause it right when his first foot's hitting the ground, Mac. Right. If I'm evaluating a D lineman, right, the first thing I'm looking at is how quick is he getting off the ball. Is he the fastest guy off the football, right? So watch. He is. Right right when the ball snapped, right? Pause it. Like, he's already moving. Like, look at 44 and look at him. Like, he's already got his foot in the ground. He's already going. 90's barely out of his stance. Like, this dude is humming off the football. And that's the greatest stressor you can ever put on an offensive lineman is if you feel like you're beating him to the spot. Right and right here, I mean Matthews right. is a great left tackle. Great right? he left played tackle. Played in this league for a long time. His yes. dad's one of the best to ever do it. Like he was my, I think he was my class, 2013. Right. So right here, boom, that little rush right there to clear the hands, right there, you immediately have the shoulder. He cleared the hands without breaking stride. You didn't stop his feet. No. And now he owns you. Because right. He and the now the great dudes can turn on that inside foot. That's the hardest thing. People always say, don't cut on your inside foot. As a D lineman, you're constantly cutting on his inside foot. Right. This isn't a ball. He's not Desmond Ritter's not holding the football back here. He's not jerking it off for too long. This is a two second rush. He's at the quarterback. Ten yard dash, two seconds. And the ability to not get punched and off your spot. This this move right after he cuts it, the inside foot right there, that's such a hard turn to make. 
that's such a hard turn to make. And then to finish at the top, these are the edge rushers that are going to get paid because of these just the quick cat-like reflexes on their rushes. This set by Jake Matthews initially is great. He's square. It's awesome. But right there, stop. See how he opened and see how his hands go up when he sees that swat. Instead of putting your hands up, go back, punch his fucking shoulder. You need to punch the closest thing to you. You need to keep him away. Instead, of he accidentally opens right there and puts his hands up because he sees, and he's obviously watched film, that he knows he's going to swipe these hands. But if he would have just stayed a little square, it makes turning this corner harder. But the minute we drop open, like Jay said, they can instantly plan on that inside foot and cut even tighter, which gives Desmond Riddler no fucking time to do it. Look, he's literally gone on to read number two right there. That's a second read. And he's the ball's coming out. Mm. And that's why these guys are so dangerous. It's because they're so fast. And when I look at strip sacks like this, too, go back one more time, just real quick, last one, Mm -hmm. last thing here. The first thing I always look at on a strip sack is like, hey, did the quarterback screw you by getting too deep? Right? No. No. Back foot hits at nine. So 10 10 yards is kind of the danger zone of you can't, you can't, yeah, that's no man's land. They call that no man's land. Yeah, you can't stay at nine. Your back foot has to hit at nine or 10, and then you have to step up. Right, and so that's the first thing I look at is like, is a pass rusher when he gets a strip sack like this? Like, is it on the quarterback? So like, boom, he hits there. He's at eight. He's, he's at, at eight. He's, he's at, at nine. He's at eight yards, right? And he steps up even a half step there. He's not deep. Like the ability to turn the corner that quickly is really special. Yes. Nice. All right, here's our here's our man right here. There goes that man. Do. Just, I mean, he's just go back, go back, this watch is him such turn. Such a lethal rush because watch the inside arm. So, like as a tackle here, when Josh Allen's rushing me, right, I'm like, okay, what do I got? What do I got? And as soon as I feel him come into me with that inside arm as he's rushing here, so like I'm setting, I'm setting. Okay, I'm thinking bull rush. Boom. Okay, here it comes inside, like long arm bull rush to the inside. Yep. I got to sink down. I got to be ready to get down on this. And then he just does the little ghost move back to the outside. Oh, wow. Look it's at that turn, a- though. Right there. Right there. Watch this. Mm. He's going to turn this corner so tight. And like Jay said, the minute you see that long arm, you're thinking sit down because it's going to be something or you're going to try and slap feet, it away. Bull rush, right? right. Stop my feet, bull rush. But right now, he's going to pull himself through Boop. right there. And that turn right there. To turn all the way back around with two guys blocking you, that's fucking incredible. That's dirty. That's dirty, bro. You, uh, you're a dirty boy. Ooh, this sure. is going against one of the best too, Laramie Tunsil, Dude, all pro. I was watching a couple all of these pro. last night against Laramie. Is this the one where he goes inside? Yep. Ooh. Oh. Um, Go back. Go back. Bring it. Bring it back. Inject it into my veins. All right. Listen. <laughs> this play right here. Instantly twenty three right here. If you're seeing him up here, if I'm the tackle, I'm trying to figure out why is he in the B gap, right? This is not uncommon rush, but to have him standing there and to just rush this B gap, like you're just going to rush the back straight up, that's fucking weird. So instantly, the minute he's here, this tackle should be like, I'm getting vertical because this is the newest trend is they love to pick dudes. And if you don't see it coming, this speed on the outside will freak you the fuck out because look, you think he's coming into you and then all of a sudden, shit, and this is what they're doing, creating these double teams with the running back. See, they don't really know how to put a guy onto us like that. So he's kind of like, I'm doing my job and the tackle's like, fuck, I'm about to get picked. And here comes the lone rusher all by Mm. himself. I mean, dude, it's, great, it's, it's a great design. Right? It's dangerous. Yes, you have to drag off that instantly with a guy in the B gap. You should be thinking the entire time that he's coming to pick me. And I know people are like, you're you're acting crazy. I'm not. I've been picked like this. I've seen guys get picked like this. It happens so fast that if you don't count everybody as a threat out here, this guy out here, 41, now he brought his friend to the party. Like What's this the is how it gets here, dangerous. What's, the back's what, got to get up. The in back there. has to get up there and punch the him onto waiting. you. The back's waiting too long in this, right? So it, he, the, he's got to fill this gap and right wait, now. And run wait up wait there and Josh smack Allen him in the face. In. Yes. Yeah, if you if you allow this dude to get a running start at your tackle, there's not. Okay. Much, I mean, this is actually a pretty damn good set by Tunsil, right? And he feels it and he comes in right away. But you, the he's got no help. Three gets no nothing on him. Yeah. Like you can't pass that off when you don't flatten the penetrator, right? That's the number one rule of passing stunts off. If you don't flatten the penetrator, you'll never get the looper. Right, and so the back job's there to flatten the penetrator. He doesn't, 
And he goes through here. This is a cheap this, one. This is cheap. This We're is not, a cheap one. Listen, I don't know I if I can even. I just want to know like what happened. So well, this empty, was clearly empty, yeah. it's empty protection, right? So empty protection. We've talked about it forever. You protect AMF, all these motherfuckers, inside out. Right. right? So, okay. So you so can these only are, okay. you can only block five. Right? You can only block five. One. There's six guys up. So you're going to take the most dangerous inside. And on the left side here, 23 and 33 are the most dangerous. Right. So you're going to cut 41 loose, and the, you have to beat him with the ball. Like you have to beat forty one with the ball here. So as this plays out, you protect short. inside out. You're short one. See, go right? back. You're short one. I yeah. think they so probably slid it that, that way because they knew there was pressure coming that way. Because you could say you could either slide it either way. One of the guys off the edges is going to be free. Pause. Go back. The reason that we like to slide this way is because forty one you think would drop with the back right away. Yep. You think he's going to peel. If okay. he doesn't peel with the back, you throw it to the back. Why? Because no one's fucking covering him. They're yeah. blitzing seven, and we only have five. Somebody is messing up somewhere. Like At some point, you think maybe Josh Allen should have been peeling with the back here, but then you see 23s on him. So then you throw him the ball right now, and you say, make a play right now. Because look, nobody's blocking he's not, 41. He's, not, he's also not looking. He right. should be. He yeah. should yep. know, hey, dude, these guys are all coming. This is gone protection at he the same time. He should just sit right over here, right? Just, just, just turn yeah. around. Just turn, turn. Literally, turn literally just turn and look eyes. for the ball. But again, so many times we see D linemen in this position like get juked out and ran right by him. Just the, the finish ability at the quarterback by Josh Allen is phenomenal. Look at that get off. Look at that get off, dude. Yeah, here he is right here. Look, yep. his hand's already up and rolling. The ball barely moved. 44 hasn't even moved yet. Like, that's the difference between a sack and a hurry. This is the one I was watching. Like, oh, Go this is Rex brutal. This is crazy because they're sliding to the they left. They have to slide to him. And it's probably just to 33. It's probably one of these, like, lawn. You know what I'm saying, Jay? Yeah, Where all of a sudden the guard's kind of focused in on him. Yeah, we're super tight in here. Because the minute that we're sliding this way and he goes inside, Scruggs should be there. Scruggs should be like, yeah, bro, you're not coming in here today. But instead, he just pins it in. That's why I, I don't think this is as much Laramie. Oh, it's a screen. That's why. And he just wrecks, so he re yeah. Oh, oh he wrecks the screen. screen. And he wrecks, wrecks the, the screen, whole thing. dude. Coaches hate when they fucking wreck the screens, dude. Oh, if you give up a sack on a screen, you and you're like, punt. it's like an unwinnable third. situation at down. times. If it's a second down screen, you give up a sack, you might as well throw the punt team out there, dude. They get so mad. Look at this wide ass front, bringing everybody back in. <laughs> you see, just nobody even noticed that. Out, Look how wide everybody is, and where are they all going to go? They're all going to pinch in real fucking close to the quarterback. Like, it's just getting you way out there to bring you way back in. Get out here, try and redirect. No punch, right? <sighs> as much as, like, Tunsil tries to get in there late, but if you don't fight force with force when that guy's coming inside and you don't get extension with that inside arm, I mean, gosh, Go back. I'm just ripping him down with one arm. It's like, a great the strength. Dude. The strength of Josh Allen is really impressive. This is a great set by Laramie Tunsil. He just needs to punch. Boom, right there. See where he kind of like gathers to go get him? He should have yeah. just straight up punched him and sent him all the way into Scruggs. But when you catch like this, and I tell the guys in the gym, you could be the strongest dude in the world. If they have five yards head start into you, you're not going to stop them. They're mm -hmm. dangerous. They're biting down on a mouth guard. They know they're not going to get hurt. Like They're just going to give everything they have. You have to punch them. Laramie is a great tackle too, by the way. I will say your your guy Cordell. I think this is a good rep for him. So I'm not CB guy 67 Cordell. for those that don't know Cordell Volson. Jay obviously reps him. I train him. Fucking love him. He is. Yeah, one came of the in best. as a fourth rounder. Started as a rookie. Has played every single snap in two years. Badass, bro. He is a badass. Big Orlando Brown on the outside. Boom. All right, good <sighs> rep by CB. I'll handle that. Okay. Hell yeah. I can watch we were all, we were, Sorry, we were all I watching can, CB. I'm sorry, I was watching 67. We're, we're sorry. Oh, sorry, I apologize. You right. better, hey, 67. You know you set. saw his set. You sit know you the, <laughs> Sit on the bull rush. Nice job. All right, back to Josh Allen. So, play it again. I literally didn't watch it. <laughs> I was watching 67. <laughs> no, it, it's, didn't even pay attention. But again, so here's the strength, right? Right there. So that's, just that's, that a arm, 300, man. that's a 360 pound man. Right, and we watched him earlier in this film breakdown flash this fake bull rush move and get back to the outside. Right, so he's trying to do the same thing here. He's trying to get Big Orlando Brown to stop his feet and then come back to the outside. Right, as he puts this arm there, so he flashes it quickly, and he's like, "Okay, I want to get back to the outside." But every great pass rusher in the NFL has a secondary move. 
right? He's like, okay, right there. He's trying to see. I was trying to get his hips back to the outside. Yeah. Good inside, good outside hand by Orlando Brown here. Oh, great. Right? He's got good hands inside. He's not going to let him escape to the outside. He immediately, without missing a beat, converts to the second move, right? Counter move back inside. Inside. And bowl. then gets there. Right, that's that, what makes great pass rushers. Is they have plans. Paw there too. They have yeah. plans to be like, hey, how am I going to get to the quarterback if my first move gets beat? Right, because you don't have time to think to get to a secondary. You have to have two moves ready to go at each time. So he got his initial move stopped and was able to come back to that inside bowl as a counter. That's a phenomenal rush. This is like a horror movie where you know someone hears a noise. Jake Browning hears a noise in the kitchen in the middle yeah. of the night and. He scopes it out. It's all clear. And so he leans up against a closet door and there's a hand. Boom, the all of a sudden, a hand grab. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine what that's like as a quarterback. All of a sudden, you feel a big hand grab you. Like, come here. You're like, oh, shit. A sandwich between Walker shit. and Josh Allen. Not ideal scenario. Oh, here we go. All right. So we're, uh, we're over here. Other side, Saints. I think. Nope. No, yeah, you're right. That's him. Big He's mostly, mostly on the right side for all. Oh, oh, oh go back. It's the same thing. It's the same move. It's the bull rush into the outside, and it's because when you catch a bull rush from a guy like this this fast, you, most of the time people try to brace. And when you brace, you're not ready for the next move. See, like right there. You're, he's kind of like, all right, I see it, and he's overextended, and then all of a sudden, right now, your feet Rips are going to stop. Away. Go back, because if you can see it right on film, he smacks his outside hand, and that's one of the biggest problem offensive linemen have. Play this real slow. Once they make contact, you're going to see him slap his outside hand, and once he does, Andreas Pete's feet start right there. See that? It's a terrible habit that we have because the hands are always kind of connected to the feet. Then when somebody grabs this or stops it, that foot will stop. But you have to train yourself to keep going because that see that half step right there is what allows him to turn the corner. And then there's nothing you can do. It's a great pass rush move. And at the same time, Andreas Pete needs to just sit down and punch him and move your feet. That's that simple. It's it's that simple, but it's extremely hard to do. There's no like, question. It, it, it's it's such a hard thing to do because when you get in that body position, right, just biomechanically, if you throw a left arm and your left arm gets thrown down and all your upper body weight's going to the right, and you're telling your feet keep kicking to the left, like it's a really hard thing as an offensive lineman to do. But it's what makes the great ones great. This this is fun when you have two defensive ends. Oh, and all of a He's sudden, the guard either. nightmare scenario. The guards guard. in a real guard stance. <laughs> so this is Josh Allen, but then he's obviously on the inside of this set. It, it's a, it's a wide set, but he's on the inside here. Absolutely. I'm, I'm also ninety percent sure that that left guard is an undrafted free agent rookie oh, from uh, North Dakota State. Like, sorry, Bryce Young. This is this is how this is working. This is how this out. is going. Number one, we can't catch. We have to punch the penetrator always, always, always. Dude, get off the ball. Get off your toes. See how there's no strike? Yeah, it's the same thing we See, talked about with Houston. It's the same Houston. thing. If we you keep don't flatten about. the penetrator, you'll never get the looper. But look how fast he turns. The, I mean, that yes. is insane. And this is not a sack for him, dude. This is not his sack. This is 95 sack. His job is just to come in here and pick the tackle. Right. He ends up getting the sack. Yeah. yeah. Dude, That's the penetrator should never get the never. sack. Because his job Ever. is to get contained. Right, yes. like when you're the penetrator, your job is to make sure that that quarterback doesn't escape outside the pocket. But so his is, job is to clear all of this out this yes. way. Yes, and, and then not, 95 and he, comes and, smoking in. And he's supposed to come around yep. and get the sack. Yeah. Correct. Yep. But look, the left guard is turned already. And also, if you go back and watch his set, this is clearly a third down. He doesn't get any depth. No depth. Watch. His set will stay on that line or in front of it, just where he is. Watch. You're talking about the guard here, right? Yep. Yes. Left guard. Yep. Okay. Like, number one thing when you've got, especially a D end over the top of you, get your ass off the ball. Get back. Right? You've got to give yourself space. He goes out first. You're toast. He's just, yeah, he's you're toast. There. Like, you're toast because your tackle's getting back. But, again, the tackle's trying to come back inside. If you don't flatten him, he can't help you. And then the ability to split that and then turn the corner, I mean, that's, that should never happen. That's a cardinal sin as an offensive lineman. If you let the penetrator get the sack on a TE, like – you might as well just sit on the bench and go. I'm sorry. I know my replacement's going in. Like For that. Sure. You just you can't allow that to happen. Punch yeah. the penetrator. Punch always. Strike. Always, always. And and pay Josh, Josh Allen. Allen. Pay, pay him. Pay the man. Josh Allen. Right. As much as you talk pay about paying him. quarterbacks, because you talk about game winning drives of like, hey, we need the guy that can go win us a game. You pay the defensive ends on the other side to be closers. 
right? Yep. Closers at the end of the football game, Aiden Hutchinson, Daniil Hunters, Josh Allen, TJ Watts, the Bosa's like those dudes are just as important as quarterbacks to call a game at the end of the game. Be like, Hey, that third and eight, that's a sack. And now it's fourth and 15 for you to go win this football game. Right. Like those dudes deserve all the money. All hey, J- Jaguars and or football and trenches fans, if you could click the like button and the subscribe button on this YouTube channel and video, if you enjoyed this content, you can help us grow this thing. 18,000 subs in the first 18 months. These guys uh, spreading knowledge in the trenches here. We'll see you next time for the next film breakdown on the O-line committee.